What's up fam? It's your boy Ghetto coming back at you once again and today's video is a beginner video for those using MPC Beats or just starting out with the MPC software. I have been getting this question over and over again. How do you run VSTs inside of the MPC Beats software? So that's what we're going to get into. Follow me. So in this video, I'm going to assume that you have some third-party VSTs already installed on your computer, and if not, at the very least, you do have the optional MPC plugins installed. Let's start by opening the MPC Beat software. Now here we are with the MPC Beat software opened up, and we're going to go to an empty project. I always start with an empty project, but if anybody wants to play around with the templates to try to get a feel for the software, Feel free to do so. But again, let's start out with an empty project. And we're down here at the bottom, empty project right here. That's what we're gonna click on. Now, we have a blank empty project. As said in my previous video, when it comes to the different things that you can use inside the MPC Beat software, they are all listed under the track. We have the square, the four squares for drum programs. We have this keyboard icon, which is for key groups. It also brings up the piano roll. Next to that, we have plugin. You click that and we can load plugin. As you see, when you do click plugins, you already start with the default tube synth plugin already installed. You don't have to do anything else. It automatically starts with tube synth if that's what you want to use. After that, we have MIDI tracks where you can send MIDI in and out of the MPC Beat software and also to different tracks inside of the software. Then we have clips, clip launching. I rarely use this functionality, but it's there. So you can record instantaneous loops in tempo and things like that. And then you have your CV tracks. I don't have any CV or modular equipment, so I don't use those at all at this time. Um, that is something that I'm actually looking into, but as for right now, I have no use for it. Let's go back to the plugins. Again, by default, TubeSynth is selected as soon as you click plugin. Now, if you want to pop TubeSynth out to have more visual control over it, you can click this small box right here with the arrow on it, and it will give you a pop-up with the different thing that you can control inside of TubeSynth every controllable aspect you will find inside this small little box. Also, you can go right here and click uh, either up or down on the arrow to change presets. Additionally, you can click the down arrow and it will bring up a menu which also has all of the presets listed. You can also edit the default Akai plugins, which are electric, baseline, and tube synth by going to the program editor. So you'll click this down arrow and go to program edit. And then at the bottom, it will give you a GUI of all the changeable parameters inside of the default Akai plugins. Now, if you want to change the plugin completely, in this instance, we have two synth loaded. We're going to click on that and it will bring up our plugin menu. Now you see MPC plugins. Under MPC plugins, you have listed Air Music Technology and then you'll see Baseline, Electric, and finally Tube Synth. These are the three default plugins that come with the MPC Beat software. Maybe you don't want to use those plugins. If you have third-party VST plugins loaded, they will be under the VST tab. So you click the plus icon next to VST, and you will have all of the companies that make the plugins listed. If you have it sorted by manufacturer and sorted by type selected, I would advise that you do that, especially if you have a lot of plugins. Now from there, you can go to the company you want. Um, I will go to Future Audio Workshop. They have one of my favorite plugins. I use it quite a bit. It's called Sublab. Now select Sublab, 
once I have sublab selected, it will stay highlighted and I'll go down to the bottom and click select. Now it changed from TubeSim to sublab. Now there is a downfall to this when you're using third party VSTs at this time, you cannot select the presets using these up and down arrows. And if you want to change the parameters inside of the third party VSTs, you do have to click this pop out box, but you will see the full plugin in the box. Unlike the Akai plugin, you actually get a nice GUI to work with and you can change anything in these plugins that you want to change. All parameters will be available to you. And right now I'm just uh, quickly designing a custom 808. I don't know what this is going to sound like. I'm just, just doing it real quick. So. Just something real quick. It's not perfect. I didn't even hear it until after I put the headphones on. Just showing you how easy it is. Um, have some stuff that I don't like. They, they choo, choo, choo. I would get rid of that and make it a little more clean. But um, just to show you now, if I don't want to use sub lab on this particular track and I want to use something else, click on the name sub lab. Uh, let's see. Maybe I want to go to native instrument and use contact. Click select. Sub lab will then change the contact. And now I hit that pop out box and now I can load up whatever instrument that I want to add. So we're going to go with cloud supply. And now we have cloud supply running inside of the MPC beat software. real easy to do and that's basically it so after watching this video i hope that you have a basic idea and understanding of how to open up vsts whether they're pre-installed or third-party vsts inside the mpc beat software and you are good to go from here thanks for watching i appreciate you um feel free to give this video a thumbs up if it helped you out at all and uh i'm out until the next one